I previously posted videos on rating Casio watches in order to use them as chronometers for celestial navigation at sea. I'm grateful to YouTubers Tashido and Papunet, who both recommended the Casio WV59 as a better alternative to the cheaper F91W and W86 in the comments of those videos. So I bought one and rated it. It was somewhat more accurate than the cheaper watches, but the main advantages for celestial navigation are features that it has that make it easier. To begin with, it's a radio-controlled watch, one of Casio's Wave Scepter range. It picks up time signals once a day to correct for drift of the quartz oscillator. They are able to pick up signals in multiple locations in Europe, America and Japan, and so will work when close to one of these locations, but not far out at sea. A useful feature is that the watch will tell you when it last received a time update if you press the lower right hand button. That means that you still have to rate the watch for long sea crossings, but some of the work is done for you because you don't have to set it and record the time of setting in order to calculate the rating later. The watch gives you that information. Another feature is that you can turn off the radio receiver to rate it. You don't have to put it in a Faraday cage to block out the signal. A surprisingly useful feature is that unlike the cheaper watches, when the stopwatch is in operation, the time with seconds is still displayed on the screen, so you can synchronise the stopwatch seconds to the time seconds. That makes it easier to take sightings, because now all you have to do is to press the stopwatch lap button when the celestial body touches the horizon, rather than having to look away from the sextant and note the seconds on the watch face which is particularly difficult if you're taking star sightings at dawn or dusk when the light is poor and you need to wear glasses to see the watch, but would prefer not to use them when looking through the sextant. One thing I have noticed though is that if the watch receives an updating time signal while the stopwatch is running, it will update the time but it won't change the stopwatch reading. So leaving the stopwatch running continuously and just using the lap timer every time you take a sighting is OK, but you still need to check that it's in sync with the time. The rating technique I used was as for previous watches. I kept it in a drawer at room temperature for six weeks, but without recording or thermostatically controlling the temperature. Every week I filmed it with high-speed video next to network time in order to measure its drift. I then put it in a freezer at minus 17.5 degrees centigrade for one week. The room temperature in the drawer was around 15 degrees. Changes in room temperature caused the rating to vary over the six-week period. This plot shows the results of the five watches I have rated with the WV59 in purple. The sharp drop at the end is when they are in the freezer, but for the room temperature period it's clear that the WV59 was the most accurate. If we look at just the three genuine Casios and take out the freezer period, we can see that the week-to-week -week variation in rating is fairly similar between the three. It's just that the WV59 is better calibrated to zero drift. This plot shows the temperature coefficients as drift in seconds per day per degree C, calculated from the difference between the freezer and the room temperature. Again, the WV59 is the best, with the fake F91Ws being the worst too, but the difference is fairly slight. The cheaper Casios are between $10 and $20, and the WV59 retails for about $70. It's still a lot less than the cost of a sextant, though. It is more convenient and easier to use for navigation, and it's also more accurate. But it's not accurate enough to mean that you don't need to rate it. And also, its temperature coefficient is such that you will still need to put it in an incubator if you want it to maintain time within a second over weeks. That changes the decision about which is best somewhat, because you could get two cheaper watches, put one in an incubator and use the other for sightings, and then sync the stopwatch of the second watch to the time of the first to allow the same trick of using the stopwatch lap timer to note the time when celestial bodies contact the horizon. It is nice to have the radio control feature, particularly if most of the sightings you're going to take are within range of the time signals, because then you don't have to worry about the whole watch rating business at all. 
Overall, as a standalone watch for navigation, the WV59 is a clear winner. But when compared to a brace of cheaper watches, the advantages are more marginal, particularly if an onboard incubator is required for long crossings anyway.